Hey, hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, my name is Hannah, and today we're gonna try something a little different. Um, this is gonna be a stitch with me, but it's gonna be a stitch with me that is similar to, if not <laughs> almost exactly the same, as what um, Pam from Pam's Crafty Corner um, does also stitcherista if you don't know who she is she is um i think more of a diamond painter now but she does stitch um <coughs> so we're gonna sit here stitch a while and talk about some true crime and so um i i think i'm gonna name this series true crime stitchy time <laughs> we all love a little bit of alliteration well it's not alliteration it's um rhyme I guess it's just a rhyme but I thought that would be fun and I I know that there's nobody who's currently calling theirs that uh too so that's what I'm gonna call it <laughs> um so Today, we are going to talk about the case of um, Tylee and, well, she's Tylee Ryan, and um, he is J.J. Vallow, um, and their mother is named Lori Vallow. And you might know about this one already. Um, it was pretty recent. Um, and some more information has just come out this year, uh, not this year, last year, um, almost a year ago, about, you know, what's going on. So, um, I've got some notes here that I'm going to be referring to, um, quite a good bit. So, I'm going to hopefully be able to do this all at the same time. But um, we will, let's just do like a little bit of a brief kind of thing. And then I'm going to get more into detail about <clears throat> everybody involved. And there's a lot of people involved in this one. So, um, again, like, they, like I said, this is Tylee Ryan. Um, and his name is Joshua Jackson, but people called him JJ um, Vallow. And they have two different last names um because they were two different marriages and we'll get into that she was a she was a lady who, who went around <laughs> she had a lot of husbands <laughs> um but Tylee was 17 and JJ I think was seven um, and they were two American children from Rexburg, Idaho, and they went missing in September of 2019, um, and unfortunately were found deceased, um, in June of 2020, so not too, not too long ago, actually. Um, so Tylee was last seen alive at Yellowstone National Park in September of 2019, and JJ was last seen alive um, on in September 2019 as well, like later in September, almost at the end of September, um, at his elementary school, which was Rexburg's Kennedy Elementary School. Um, really quickly, I have to count. <laughs> okay, I have to count here too. Okay, this could be difficult having to count and <laughs> and talk about these cases. But anyway, um, so JJ was initially reported missing um, by some relatives that were concerned um, not just about, you know, the children who they hadn't heard from, you know, in weeks, um, but also a bunch of suspicious incidents that had been occurring, like, surrounding this family. 
Um, so in November of 2019, police questioned Lori, who was their mother, and um, they were she was questioned about you know their whereabouts and and their welfare because you know nobody knew where they were. So that's kind of just a brief background on this whole situation. <clears throat> And we're going to get into kind of the background of all the people involved here. So we'll start with Lori. We're not going to really get into the background of the children because they were children. You know, all this was 17. So, um, you know, unfortunately, she, they didn't really have a long, fruitful life. But, um, you know, Lori, it, Lori is an interesting case. <laughs> she has lots of... Lots of background to her. So she um, was born in, well, she was actually born Lori Cox um, in 1973 in San Bernardino, California. Um, she got married at the age of 19 to her high school boyfriend um, in 1992, and not much is known um, about that marriage uh it didn't last very long they got divorced like pretty much right away so that was a bust <laughs> and then again at age 22 she married um a 23 year old named william some last name that i'm not gonna be able to pronounce <laughs> let's see if i can zoom you in a little bit guys I realize you can't really see anything Sorry, 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 I'm moving you around, I know, I know, I'm going to be sick, but <laughs> I want you to be able to see what's going on. Okay, and I think I've set up the camera to a good place where I can actually work and you can kind of see what's going on, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so she married this guy, William, should I even try to pronounce his last name? Lagiolia? Lagiolia? Lagi... Oh yeah, William L. <laughs> in Travis County, Texas, um, in 1995, which is weird because that's the year I was born. <laughs> so, awkward. Um, okay, let me count really quickly. Ten. There's going to be a lot of counting. Ten. Okay. And those two, her and William, had a son in 1996 before they got divorced in 1998. So like I said, you know, kind of got around. She had multiple husbands and, oh, there's more. <laughs> there are more husbands. So we'll keep going. Um, so her next husband's name was... Joseph Anthony Ryan Jr. And this one, there's a little bit more story here. The other two, there doesn't seem to be too much, like, background other than they got divorced. Um, there's no suspicion anywhere about any of the things. But um, in 2001, so what is that, three years Three years after her divorce, her late, latest divorce, um, she got married to Joseph Anthony Ryan, and they, well, Joseph legally adopted Colby, who was the most recent, the last husband's son. Um... So, uh, they also had a biological daughter, her and Joseph, who was Tylee, who we kind of briefly spoke about at the beginning, um, and she was born in 2002, and then in 2004, Ryan filed for divorce, um, which was finalized in 2005. So, they weren't married for very long. <laughs> But when is Lori ever married for very long, honestly? 
um, <clears throat> in 2007, so this is where it gets a little weird. So in 2007, um, in Texas, uh, you know, Ryan, um, Joseph, the husband, the divorcee husband, uh, was attacked by Lori's brother. Um, and his name was Alex Cox. And this attack happened because there were allegations that Ryan had been, or that Joseph, I'm calling him by his last name, um, that he had been abusive to Lori and both of the children. But they were just allegations, and I don't necessarily believe them. Um, so essentially what the brother did was he tasered the divorcee husband and threatened to murder him. <laughs> He's a crazy person. And then Cox, the brother, um, pled guilty to... Um, to these crimes and he was sentenced to only 90 days in jail that's that's it just 90 that's all he got <laughs> so and then he served those 90 deals in 90 deals 90 deal 90 days my goodness 90 days he served those days in Austin Texas and um, then he changed his surname, <laughs> I don't know, to some something. I guess after he was released, he changed his surname. And, um, oh, he changed it to the, the name of his wife. Um, and then he died in 2019, the, the, the brother. Um, so after, you know... Uh, Lori and Joseph got divorced. She went a looking <laughs> because, you know, as one does when you get divorced, what is that, three times? Three times now? Um, so she went a looking and she found a new boo. <laughs> and his name was Leland Charles Anthony Ballow. So he went by Charles. <sighs> this one. This one is something else, let me tell you. So, um, they got married in 2006. And um, they got married in Las Vegas. And it seems like she liked the idea of getting married in Las Vegas. Like she'd been married, you know, in Texas. I think every time. Um... Uh, she might have gotten married to Joseph in Las Vegas, but she got married in Las Vegas, and um, she was a Catholic originally. You know, she had grown up Catholic. She was a Catholic, but she converted and became a member of... The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which I'm just going to call it the LDS. Um, and, oh, I guess she wasn't. She was an LDS and he was a Catholic. Sorry, I'm getting my facts mixed up. She was a, she was an LDS lifelong. He was a Catholic lifelong, but he actually changed his faith and did it because of her, because she was an LDS follower. So <clears throat> he um, had two previous, he had two sons from a previous marriage, and they, you know, came, came along. Um, they were named Nicholas and Zachary. I don't know if he went by Zach or he went by Nick, but, you know, it is what it is. They're not really, they're not really too involved in this whole ordeal. Um, but they also, Lori and Charles, also adopted um, 
Charles's grandnephew. His name was JJ. So this is this is the JJ we talked about at the beginning. Um, so he wasn't initially like anybody's son. I mean, he was somebody's son, but he wasn't Lori's son. He wasn't um, Charles's son. He was Charles's grandnephew. And they adopted him before they moved to Kauai in Kauai, Kauai, Kauai. I don't know how you actually say it in Hawaii. Um, and they moved in 2014. So around 2015, um, Lori had read a book called Standing in Holy Places. It's a series um, by Chad Daybell. Um, and she became obsessed um, with them, which is what friends said, that she was obsessed with these books. And he was kind of, we'll get into him soon. Um, but in 2016, they actually moved back to, you know, the contiguous USA, um, to Arizona. And that that's, that's kind of important later. Um, but in 2018, Lori and her friend attended a Preparing a People event. Um, and this event was where she met Chad Daybell for the first time. Um, and according to her friend, by the end of the weekend, Daybell, Daybell told Vallo the two had been married in seven, seven previous lifetimes, which is crazy. <laughs> He's a nutcase. I mean, I don't know. I just find this, like, nuts. Um, that you think you're married to somebody seven lifetimes ago. Um, so apparently, you know, she was like, yes, I believe it. Um, so then after that, they began speaking to each other privately, like, in private communication. Um, and several weeks after they met originally... Uh, Charles left town for a business trip and Lori had an intimate overnight gathering at her home. Um, and both her friend and Chad Daybell, um, who was speaking at another conference in Arizona, they were both there. Um, and this is the friend that went to this, like, event with her originally. So... Oi, I've got to figure out how to get my flosses over here. I mean, this setup's good for stitching. <laughs> this is not necessarily good for trying to grab the flosses out of the out of the box. Um, anyway, so if you listen to, I'm not sure if anybody listens to the Dateline NBC podcast, um, Mommy Doomsday. Um, the friend recalls Daybell lavishing attention on Vallo and expounding upon his unusual religious beliefs and the deeper mysteries of God with a group of the overnight guests. So according to the friend, and the friend's name is Gibbs, but I'm just going to keep calling her the friend because it's easier to remember because there's a lot of people in this. Um, according to the friend, Daybell stated he... Uh, had lived 31 different lives on various Earth-like planets. Um, and he referred to others as light or dark and various gradations in between. I mean, this is just, I don't know, a nuts. Like, you lived 31 <laughs> lifetimes on, on Earth-like planets. Yeah, because you lived one lifetime on Earth. I don't know. I just think it's... Crazy. Uh, but anyway, um, Daybell believed that the dark individuals were from this earth, but were followers of Satan. And um, those that were light were followers of Jesus Christ. I just, I can't. 
it's just wild. Um, Daybell also referred to Lori uh, and an eternal being of 21, uh, 21 separate lives. Oh, I guess she was that eternal being. I don't know. Oops, sorry. Earthquake. Um, hitting the hitting the stand. Um, that's the first time tonight, which is good. <laughs> I think that's the first time tonight. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so she, he referred to Lori as an eternal being of se 21 separate lives, and only five of which had occurred on this planet. And that those five were the same five he had lived on this planet. So, it's, it's, it's wild. Isn't it wild? I don't know. It's just wild. Like... Who are you people? <laughs> and why do you think that you're living 31 lifetimes on a bunch of different planets? I don't know. Um, okay. So Lori was thrilled and attracted to the belief system that he had. Like she loved this idea that, you know, she had been living multiple different lifetimes on multiple different planets <laughs> I think it's crazy but you know to each their own I guess and uh, they began a much uh, I guess she began a much deeper and, and singular focus on this newfound purpose and um, and on on Chad Daybell you know she was she was very very into him um, so in 2018, the, uh, Lori and Chad appeared together on the Preparing a People podcast um, episode, Time to Worry You're Up. And then Daybell later, Chad, later stayed in Lori's home in Arizona. Now, she's still married. She's still married at this point. Um, so according to Charles, Lori's husband, uh, in February of 2019, Lori told her husband, Charles, that she no longer cared about him or JJ, the, 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 the baby, essentially. He's not a baby per se, but he's the youngest. Um, and she claimed that she was the reincarnated wife of Joseph Smith. Then she vanished for 58 days. She just vanished for 58 days. And then in that same month, Charles Vallow filed for divorce, stating that his wife had threatened to murder him. Doesn't surprise me. Taken 35000 dollars from their joint bank accounts and stolen his truck also <laughs> not surprising um he filed for an order of protection against himself at the advice of his attorney uh citing a genuine fear for his life which obviously if she's going around saying i don't care about you and i'm gonna kill you like yeah I would fear for my life too. She's crazy. Uh, she thinks she's a reincarnated some some person, wife of Joseph Smith, and then she just ups and ups and leaves. <laughs> After so after eventually after I guess I don't know. Oh yeah, so so okay. So here's, here's where it gets juicy. Um, in 2019, uh, Lori's, you know, estranged husband, Charles, when we were just talking about, he is shot and killed in Arizona by, you guessed it, Lori's brother, <laughs> Alex Cox, who, you know, it's interesting because this time he claims self-defense. But I, I mean, he almost killed the last one, too, uh, for whatever reason, because he's 
a crazy person. Um, <laughs> so he claimed it was self-defense um, and alleged that he went to confront Fallow about abusing his sister. So another abuse case. He says, oh yeah, she's being abused. So he went to confront him about the abuse where that's when apparently, according to the brother, Charles struck him in the head with a bat, so he went to get his gun. I don't believe that happened for a second. I think that he just straight out shot him. But he says that it was self-defense because he got a bat. So both JJ and Tylee were present during the shooting, and Lori did not tell Vallow's family or children from his previous marriage about the murder. They had to find out via news. So what a shock, right? I mean, could you imagine finding out via news articles and the TV? <laughs> I don't know. It's wild. <coughs> and here's where it gets even better. A wedding ring was purchased on Amazon that wedding ring was the deceased Charles Vallow's wedding ring. And it was sold for only almost $36, about $35.99. 17 days before Daybell's, Char uh, sorry, Chad's wife's death. And we'll get into that in a minute. So yeah, so this whole time, both Lori is married and Chad is married, but both of their spouses die. Wild. There's so much death revolving around this family. So let's talk about Daybell, Chad and his wife. So <coughs> Chad was born in Utah. And he was married to Tammy Douglas, whose name was Tammy Daybell, once they got married. They got married in 1990. And he graduated from Brigham Young University in 1992 with a BA in journalism. Hold on, let me count. And he worked, you know, amongst other jobs, he worked as a cemetery sexton, which is essentially, it's a, it's a grave digger, which strangely enough, my, my father was a grave digger when he was in school, um, to try to earn a couple of extra dollars. He did that, which is, ugh, I don't know, I couldn't do it. I'm also just not <laughs> not strong enough to be grave, grave digging. But, you know, young men, they probably have enough stamina for that. And in 2004, he founded the Spring Creek Book Company. Uh, so he, and that, that company was devoted to his end times fiction and his other religious books. Um, and he founded this with a man identified only by the name Douglas. So we don't know who this guy is, but he was a graphic artist and manager. And Chad and Tammy had five children. And I'm not going to necessarily name them because they don't really play a role. Um, but they did have five children. Um, in 2015, Daybell claimed that he heard a voice telling him to relocate to Rexburg, Idaho. Weird, right? Because Lori, Rexburg. Anyway, so he and Tammy moved there from Springville, Utah that June. 
Now, Tammy. I'm not going to get into her history too much, but I'm going to talk about her death. So, oh, Tammy. Okay. I should say, oh, Chad, but, you know. Uh, so, in 2019, Tammy Daybell reported on Facebook and to the police that we, she was shot at in her driveway um, by a masked man with what she believed was a defective paintball uh, marker. So, she thinks it was defective. She thinks it was a paintball marker. She doesn't think it was a real gun because it didn't, I guess, sound like a real gun and it didn't do the damage that a real gun would do. I mean, but paintball, I mean, if you've ever played paintball, paintball markers are, oh, they hurt. <laughs> they're not like, they're not like, I don't know, easy, but... Um, the sheriff's office didn't find the perpetrator. They didn't find anybody. Uh, um, and Chad, no. Then 10 days later, she was found dead in her home. Uh, and supposedly it was because of natural causes. Now, come on, people. <laughs> Do we really believe that? I mean, honestly. She's shot out, and then 10 days later, she's found dead. I don't think so. But, you know, that's what they said. And then Chad claimed that she had retired the night before with a terrible cough and died in her sleep. I don't believe that for a second. Because at this point, Chad and Lori had gotten together. And they were, I don't know. I don't know if they were doing anything or what, but... They were together. Um, hold on, let me grab some floss here. So that's the death of Tammy and, you know, the death of Charles. Now, let's go back to the idea of end of times, you know, kind of stuff. So that's what... <coughs> Chad was really, you know, his books are all about kind of like end of times and, you know, the world is ending and, you know, they were, <laughs> they both kind of had this idea that the, the world was ending and they needed to, you know, they were going to be, they were going to be the people who made it through. So this was an obsession for, of, of both Lori and Chad. And, uh, you know, Chad's written a bunch of books and they've both discussed it together on podcasts. Um, and apparently Vallow's niece, who I believe lived with them, she was also, she shared this belief as well. Um, Vallow being, um, Charles's, the dead husband's niece <coughs> so let's talk about the disappearance of the kids because that's really that's really where I mean because all the deaths in the family haven't made a difference but the children's disappearance is where it kind of started for Lori um, because this is where she actually played a role. Kind of all the other things, she didn't really play a role. It was kind of surrounding her. This one, this one was her, her thing. <laughs> and this is what kind of in the end got her, right? So in 2019, a doorbell video of JJ um, playing with a friend is the last video taken that he is seen alive. Um, Rexburg Kennedy's elementary school is the last confirmed place he was seen. So the video on the doorbell 
or the last like the last video of him and then the last place he was actually physically seen was at his elementary school uh lori contacted jj's school to tell him to tell them that she was withdrawing him and she was she claimed that she was going to be homeschooling him tylee the daughter was last seen <coughs> in september of 2019 the beginning um, at yellowstone national park with her brother jj and her mom lori and her uncle alex um, lori's brother and then chad had become they say incommunicado <laughs> um, at this point so in october two venmo payments were made from tylee's account to her older half brother colby who was Lori's first child. I know, lots of people. <laughs> um, one payment was sent in October of 2019 with a message that read, we love you. And the second was sent um, a little later in October with a heart emoji. Colby has said that he had not heard from Tylee since the October texts. Um, after text messaging Tylee, uh, indicating he was worried, he received responses from Tylee's cell phone that indicated she was safe, but too busy to talk. And this was in 2019, right? So this was So this was after they had gone missing that he was like texting so we don't know whether like it was really her texting if it was T tylee's mom lori texting i'm suspicious i think it was lori but you know could be wrong um after repeatedly calling tylee and those calls going unanswered um he became more worried colby so then, surprise, surprise, Chad and Lori get married. <laughs> that was a surprise. Wasn't it a surprise? Aren't you surprised? I'm so surprised. <laughs> I just can't. I can't with these people. Um, oh, that's wrong. Oh, wait. Hold on a minute. Can you even see what's going on? I don't know if you're even watching, if you care <laughs> what I'm doing, stitching-wise. Um, okay, so, and this is disgusting to me. So they got married in Hawaii in November of 2019. Remember, this is after the kids go missing. Like, they haven't been seen since September, and y'all are getting married. Like, do you care? <laughs> do you know what's going on? Like, I don't know. Obviously, she had something to do with it, but she's just up and getting married, uh, and here's the the best part, the other best part about this is this was only two weeks after Tammy had died. So Chad's, you know, dead wife. This was two weeks after she died. So they informed others. Oh, this is gross. They told people that Tylee had died in 2017. Like... These were people in Hawaii who didn't know them. But they told them that, like, her daughter had died in 2017. Or that, you know, they would say that or they would make up a story where, like, she had no minor children. Like, she didn't have any any kids who were minors. She only had, like, Colby uh, and Chad's kids who were all, like, adult, ch like, children. So she just said, oh, I don't have any kids. Like, minor children. Oh, disgusting. And at the request of JJ's grandmother, the police visited Lori's home in Rexburg, Idaho, um, in November 26th. Uh, on November 26th, sorry. 
to conduct a welfare check on JJ because she hadn't, you know, they would talk, they would call, they would talk, and she hadn't heard. Um, but Lori told the police that JJ was in Arizona. Oh, did I already do that? Yeah, I did that. Okay. Hold on, people. Um, he was in Arizona with family. And that night, a neighbor saw Lori and... <coughs> Sorry. Um, a neighbor saw Lori and her brother packing a truck outside her home. So it's like, that's suspicious. Why are you packing a truck, like, in the middle of the night? And when the police and the FBI arrived the next day to search the home, it was abandoned. So she ran. Bye. Peace out. She peaced out. She was just like, uh-uh. People are getting suspicious. I'm leaving. So flight risk, anybody? <laughs> yes. Um, they also searched Chad's home. I'm not sure if they found anything there. I don't think they did. I don't think Chad's home had anything to do with anything. Um, I don't know. But I didn't find anything that, you know, they found anything there. In December 2019 to January 2020, the police, the sheriff's office, and the FBI intensify the investigation into the disappearances of the two children as well as the investigation into Tammy's death so Chad's old wife and the flight of Chad and Lori from Idaho because they were both like peace out we're leaving <sighs> disgusting okay let me count real quick So evidence was collected and Tammy's body was exhumed for autopsy. I'm not sure if they did like an autopsy originally, but you know, it hadn't been in the ground for too long, but they exhumed it and they did an autopsy and Colby and JJ's grandparents, they pleaded with Lori and Chad to return the children because they were like we know you have them just let them go um and they offered a reward of twenty thousand dollars that was not taken up <laughs> frustrating um the investigators contended that Joshua and Tylee's lives are in danger. So JJ and Tylee's lives are in danger. The children are not with Chad and Lori. Lori knows where they are or what has happened to them, but she has completely refused to assist the investigation, choosing instead to leave the state with her new husband. She just ups and leaves. Chad follows along. I don't know if he follows along or he was the person who decided to do it, but I'm pretty sure it was Lori. And then through their lawyer, Lori and Chad stated that Chad was a loving husband and he has the support of his children in this matter. Lori is a devoted mother and she resents assertions to the contrary. Uh, we look forward to addressing the allegations once they have moved beyond speculation and rumor. Yeah, the whole thing is speculation and rumor at, to this point because they're not saying anything. Like, people are like, if they're just in a bunker, like, like we've been saying, they are end of times conspiracy, like, theorists. And if they are just keeping them in a bunker or something somewhere, just let them go. Or, better yet, just take the police to them or bring them to the police and let them see that they're okay and then you can take them back. Like, I don't know. It was just... It was just wild. Like, it didn't make sense. But, um, they also had a storage locker, which was interesting. They had this storage locker that was rented by Lori, 
in October 2019, and it contained items belonging to or, you know, relating to her children. Um, they had clothes, bikes, photographs, um, and this storage locker. Like, why would you? Okay, first of all, why do you have, like, this storage locker keeping your kids' stuff in there if they're still alive? But that she abandoned when she left Idaho at the end of November 19, 2019. She just, like, pieced out and just was like, okay, like, we're just gonna leave all this stuff. And there is video footage, and you can find it, um, that shows her and her brother Alex moving items in and out of the locker. So a lot of these items supposedly belong to Tylee and JJ. So why they were moving stuff in and out of this locker, like, you know, in October of 2019. And remember, this is a month after they had gone missing. Uh, they're just moving this stuff around. Okay. But why? <laughs> um, so... In February of 2020, Lori was arrested by the Kauai Police Department in Hawaii and charged with two felony counts of desertion and non-support of dependent children by prosecutors in Idaho. She was also charged with three misdemeanors um, resisting or obstructing officers, criminal solicitation to commit a crime, and contempt of court. She was being held on five million dollars bail, which I mean, who can pay that? They 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 did that so she can't get out, right? Like, seriously. Um, and. She later agreed to be extradited back to Idaho to fight the charges. So she was. The judge lowered her bail from $5 million to $1 million. And in May of 2020, Lori appeared for a court hearing in Rexburg to request a reduction of her $1 million bail. The judge, of course, denied her request because she's an evil human being. And at least two local bond companies were reported to be unwilling to work with her so they wouldn't <laughs> they wouldn't pay her her bond her bail bond they wouldn't bond, bail her out which is hilarious to me in march of 2020 uh there was a, rep a report an nbc reference referenced documents i can't speak today that Lori and chad became convinced that tylee and jj were possessed and be had become zombies I mean, they were just nuts. I mean, they were just nuts. Like, is that why you killed them? I don't know. Um, it's not... They... It's not known... Like, we don't know if they actually killed them. We know they're dead, but we don't know the, that she killed them. I think she killed them. But anyway, let's keep going. On June of 2020, the police executed a search warrant at Chad's home. Ah, uh, here's where we get the interesting bits right so they were they discovered human remains buried in a purport, purported pet cemetery yeah okay <laughs> pet cemetery with human bones i don't think so um daybell sachad was booked into jail later that day on obstruction or concealment of evidence he was later charged. Whoopsies. Hold on. Hold on, people. He was later charged with felony murder. On June 10th, his bail was set at $1 million, which I don't understand that. So she's set, her bail is set at $5 million, right? For, I mean, bad crimes. But he's, he's charged with felony murder and his first bail amount is only a million i don't know that to me sounds like backwards like yeah she's a terrible human being 
But if he's being sentenced with something that bad, <laughs> you're only going to set his bail at a million when hers was five million? Come on now. That to me doesn't make any sense. I mean, I don't know the criminal justice system great to any extent, but that just sounds weird to me. Anyway, um... On July 2nd, prosecutors dropped two of the charges against Lori, two felony counts of desertion and non-support uh, of dependent children, and instead charged her with obstruction and or, or concealment of evidence in regards to her children's remains. On July 2020, or in July 2020, in light of the two felony counts against Lori being dropped, her bond was lowered by the judge um, in Madison County. The judge decided to decrease bond to $50,000 on each charge, totaling $150,000, but noted that she would still need to post $1 million in the neighboring county to get out of jail um, because there were two counties involved in this because I think the remains were found in because the remains were found in Daybell's, uh, Chad's home, I think he was in a different county. So it's kind of all, all over the place. Um, in addition to the bond reduction, a jury trial for the Madison County charges were set for January of 2021. So I think that's happened already. I didn't look into that part, but... Like I said, in June of 2020, um, the, f you know, the family had confirmed that the human reins that were found on the Daybell's property were those of Tylee and JJ. The finding was officially confirmed by the police department on June 13th. Since the children's remains were found, they are no longer considered mis missing and the investigation is now focused on determining the circumstances surrounding their death. So that's kind of it. That's where we leave it. Um, for now, I know that I believe Lori and Chad definitely killed them. I don't know why. I don't know if we will know why. Maybe they've said. But... I honestly think, and here's where we'll get into, like, opinions. I honestly think that Lori, maybe originally she didn't kill them. Maybe they were hiding out. But if we're going to go with the belief that she did kill them originally, like, right away, or Chad did, somebody did, I want to say that it was because she was trying to move and this sounds bad I mean it's bad it's bad no matter what but she was trying to like move on and she had been married what this was her fifth marriage um and she wasn't married at the point that the kids went missing but you know this was the fifth relationship and maybe she just wanted a fresh start like she just wanted to be done she had <laughs> killed off her last husband Chad's wife was killed off and I don't know maybe she just but then my question is like well what about Colby was it because they were minors and she could maybe felt like she could get away with it more because they were still living with her I don't know so like then that kind of blows my theory right that she wanted to like get away from her past because she still had like Colby uh who was her first kid and I, I don't know I don't know <sighs> but anyway that is this story of Tylee and unfortunately the death I guess of Tylee and JJ and their crazy mother Lori <laughs> and Chad I mean he's just as crazy I feel like He's the one who kind of put these thoughts into Lori's head. So I don't want to say, like, he's not bad. Um, 
And I know at one point, it doesn't say it in the like article that I pulled up, but I know at one point he had said that he had seen the children with his, his own eyes and they were okay, which is a lie. <laughs> they weren't. Um, I don't know how long they had been deceased, but they were obviously not okay. Um, so I don't know. What do we think, guys? Do we think that she killed them? Do we think that Chad killed them? What do we think? Why? I don't know. It's all very... It's all very... And especially because, I mean, I'm glad that we now know, you know, that they're they're not just hiding out somewhere. Especially because it's not like they were being taken care of. Um, but... I just want to know why. Like, what was the thought process there? Anyway, I am going to, I think, finish this last stitch. And I'd love to have a conversation in the comments box. Comments box? The, the comments below. What you guys think about Lori and her wild ways. Um, and Chad, because he's also... A little bit I don't know he's a bit wild too so um what do you guys think and that oh, is the wrong place to park that <laughs> let's put it in the right hole okay so I think that's it for me it's a nice long video I'm not sure how much of it you could see but um that's okay <laughs> I will hopefully be posting this tonight, and I will talk to you guys in my video on Wednesday. Um, I'm thinking that these videos might come out either twice, a, like every two weeks, or once a month. I'm not really sure. Depends on how this one goes. Um, I will sometimes do pre-research. Sometimes I'll just, like I did kind of tonight, read off of an article um, while I stitch. And, yeah, I hope everybody has a great night, great morning, great whenever you're watching this. I will talk to you all in a couple days. Bye!